Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Comedy Therapy with Christian. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed yesterday. I received an overwhelmingly positive response. Thank you to everybody who reached out. Thank you to everybody who listened. Uh, I was checking the uh, the geolocation of where everybody was from, and it's really coming in from all over the country. And there were even some that were outside the country. There were a couple uh, in Italy, um, which I don't know. Maybe I have relatives there. I am Italian, so... Uh, I've yet to go to the old country. I yearn to go there someday. Um, But right now I'm going to stick with my crazy uh, New Yorker Italian. Um, So yeah, this is episode two. This is going to be more of the standard format uh, of how we're going to run things. Um, And again, this is a little jarring because, yes, normally episodes are coming out on Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. I am recording this earlier again. Uh, yesterday kind of threw everyone for a loop. Um, but you know, like I said, yesterday was just to lay everything out. That was not like an official episode or, or whatever. It was the syllabus episode. So without further ado, let's, let's get into some talking points. Okay. I got a lot of problems with some things and I just want to talk about it. Let me put my feet up here. Oh, boy. I had a great workout this morning, first of all, um, before I even get into anything. Great workout. Oh, I I can't even believe I'm fucking saying that. I told myself years ago, oh, I can't stand when people say, oh, I had such a great workout. It was so wonderful. Oh, I had such a great, look how many calories I burned. Look what my heart rate reached. But... Let me tell you, this morning I had a great workout. I was doing some running on the treadmill. Uh, It was awesome. Um, So I'm getting more into getting back in shape, Um, trying to fit back into the clothes that don't really fit. Uh, But I had a great workout. And one of the things that's hardest for me about going to the gym, I don't know if anybody else realizes this, but... Going to the gym, the hardest part about it for me is the social aspect, is talking to people, Uh, which you don't have to talk to people when you go to the gym, but so much of human communication is nonverbal. And when you go in, I just love to see when it's empty, you know, that just is great. I'm like, this is my playground I am going to run this 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 city here, this playground. I, I just contradicted myself, but pass over that. Um, so I walk in. There's somebody else in there, of course. I'm like, oh, maybe I fucking turn around. But I'm like, you know what? I got to rip off this Band-Aid. So I go and I start running and I'm working up a sweat, got the tunes pumping. I listen to these great headphones. They're called Oshams, O-T-I-U-M. They're wireless. Uh, they kind of wrap around your ear. They're buds that go in, and they're awesome. They have great bass and everything. $20 on Amazon, 20 bucks for a killer, killer pair of headphones. And I've only bought two of them ever, not because the first one broke, but because I lost the first pair. Um... But they're killer headphones. I don't know if I'm allowed to like say the name of the company on here or anything, but I guess the uh, whatever the podcast policed is will will tell me about it. Um, but yeah, I had a great workout. Came back, you know. Th- th- there's nothing better, you know, because the workout itself it's very hard to enjoy it when you're in the moment. I like to enjoy it after it's over because that shower that you take after the workout the post-workout shower is so fucking great you just feel like yup i'm wiping all this disgust and sweat off but you know what i earned this shower i earned it and there's nothing better i i really i really challenge you people to find me something better uh i really do anyway 
So the other day I'm at a red light, right? And I just want to make a right turn. And of course, there's somebody in front of me. But before you make the right turn, you got to check and see if there's a no turn on red sign. And there was. And I'm like, fuck, can't make a no turn on red. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Um, and I'm from New York. I'm the impatient. I'm the very stereotypical impatient driver. I'm an excellent driver. Have never been in an accident. Knock on wood. Um, but so I'm driving behind this guy. And I see the sign says no turn on red, but it says on school days between seven and three. This was a Saturday. And the last time I checked, Saturday's not a school day. So do, do you ever just have that urge? I mean, I don't know if people feel this way. Maybe, maybe I'm just crazy. Well, I am. But does anybody have that urge? Because you know the guy in front of you isn't making that right turn when it's wide open coming in the other direction and he has every chance to make it. He just sees the no turn on red. He didn't read the fine print. Do you ever have the urge to just get out of your car and walk up to this guy and be like, hey, so look, let me let me run you through this. I don't know if you've ever uh, if you've ever done any critical reading before or anything like that, but we have to pay attention to the details here. And because you can't you can't sit in your car and, and honk at the guy because then he's just gonna be like, Yeah, it says no turn on red. What are you fucking honking at me for? Hey, what the fuck? So there's no way that I can communicate that from the confines of my own car. So more than ever in my life, I don't know what it was about this particular day. I just wanted to get out of my car, knock on the window of his car, and just say, Hey, what do you think you're doing here? You know? You know that the sign says... Uh, don't turn on red on school days between 7 and 3. It ain't a fucking school day, buddy boy. Anyway, that kind of pissed me off. I don't know if that would piss anybody else off. Maybe I should talk about that in therapy, so I'll write that down. Um, everybody should go to therapy, by the way. Okay? I fucking love therapy. It's amazing. People are paid to actually listen to you. And their one job is to listen to you. That is amazing to me. That's astounding. And granted, therapy can be expensive and it can be uh, investment. Most, uh, most therapists and psychologists or whatever, or even psychiatrists, most of them are at a network. Um so you wind up paying a lot of money out of pocket until you meet your deductible. But I'm not talking about health care. Uh, so therapy's just great. Like you just you sit down, they say, have a seat wherever you like. You can pick this chair. You can pick that chair. You just sit wherever you want. And to me, I'm just like, wow, even that tiny gesture. You are a good person, even though you're getting paid so much money to do this. And really, it's what you chose to do. You are a good person. So go to therapy, everyone. I encourage you. You know, on a serious note, it's good when you have things that are in your mind and you just keep them in there and you don't talk to anybody about it. That's dangerous. You got to you gotta just... Get it out. Talk. Make a fucking podcast and talk it out. I don't know, but the, the power of verbalizing things when they're up in your head and you just want to get it out somehow, you got to verbalize these things because then shit just boils up and it just fucking just builds up and worlds collide. Uh, anyway... So 20, what year is it? Oh boy, 2019 is coming to a close, um, which is hard to believe. This year's kind of been going fast. I know it's over. It's not over yet, but uh, we've still got pretty much all of this month and 
you know, all of next month left. But now with the holidays coming up, these last two months just go and fly by. Uh, I just, uh, God, do, do you notice that every year somebody, or it's not even somebody, it's people just say, oh, I'm so happy 2019 is going to be over. This was a bad year. I don't think there's been one year since I've been on this earth, which is 22 years. I don't think that there has been one year where somebody has not said, I'm so excited for this year to be over and to start a new year. So does anybody really have a good year? Is that a possible thing? Because think about it. That's got to be pretty good. There's, what, 365 and a half days in a year? It's 365 and a half, right? There, there's a half thrown in there. I don't want to sound like a fucking moron, but, well, I am a moron. Uh, but that's a long time to be saying, yeah, this whole year was good. I guarantee you. My year was not that good. Yeah, it was an enjoyable year, but I'm not doing fucking jumping jacks and going, this was the best year I've ever had. Oh, my God. No. Okay, I, I'm i an optimist, okay? It, it may be hard to believe, but I'm an optimist. But I also live in reality. The whole negativity thing that I put on, that's my act. That's my, you know, pessimistic act. But I'm an optimist. I really, I genuinely do look at the bright side of things. And, you know, I'm just saying, this year was nothing extraordinary. It was nothing spectacular. I graduated college. Yay. That was going to happen any year, so the whole year has to be great because I graduated college? No. I got a job right out of college that I then left after five months, so whoop the fucking do. Um, so if you feel like you're having a bad year, don't don't be, be ashamed of that. Everybody's had a fucking bad year. Now, granted, yes, there are degrees of it. There are degrees of severity for your yes some genuinely horrible and bad things can happen to some people in some years and i'm sure they'd be very happy to turn the page uh into the next year but in general just the people i talk to who you know i talk to every day and i just you know kind of converse with or, or what have you those kind of conversations when people just go oh I'm just so done with this year. I'm like, really? What what happened to you this year? Did you get drunk too many times? Was that it? Somebody finds you doing hopscotch on a shuffleboard court because of how much you drank? I mean, come on. So then everybody's going to make their resolutions that they're going to stick to for two hours. Uh, which it's just it's unbelievable. Like, why make it at the beginning of the year? You can do it whenever. Like, this is my Tuesday resolution. This is my Wednesday resolution. This is my 4 o'clock on Thursday resolution. Like, why do people get so fed up about it? And then everybody's like, well, yeah, I'm doing this because it's my New Year's resolution and I want to make sure I stick to it and I'm going to work out and I'm going to eat... I'm going to eat only things that are natural and I'm going to drink all prune juice and I don't want to associate with anybody who eats chicken and I want to just be myself. Well, I got news for you. That's not going to fucking happen. Again, I'm an optimist. But you got to look at things in reality. You got to look at things in reality. Because reality is where we all live. Now, if you want to get into some physical, 
metaphysical, metaphys- metaphysical conversation about where we all exist. I'll save that for another podcast and we can have a metaphysical association. Association discussion. Jesus, I can't get words out today. And I'm on a podcast. What the fuck? Um, so, yeah, I don't know why everybody's so excited for the new year. And everybody gets so excited about it every year. These assholes stand out in Times Square from, like, the night before, and you're not allowed to go to the bathroom. You're not allowed to bring food. They're basically willingly packing themselves in like sardines just to watch a ball drop. And then what? You go, okay, life goes on. It's a new year. It's just a measurement of time, and time is the measurement of motion. Time is such a man-made concept. It it was used to measure where the sun was in the sky. And that's still how it's tracked. I mean, granted, it's all... Time is very hard to explain. But time is... I have no fucking clue where I'm going with this argument here. Wow. I'm just so fer- focused on that workout I had this morning. It was so good, I'm telling you. Start working out, even if you hate it. Like, I thought I hated it, and I still do kind of hate it, because I can't enjoy anything in life. Um, Work out. Definitely do it. Definitely put your best foot forward. Um, And put your best... uh, Put your best... Your best foot, your best ankle... Whatever, whatever the saying is. Um, so that kind of does it for our material section today. Um, right now, I want to do a little uh, little activity here. For those of you, we're, we're moving into the movie section now. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know... I love movies. Sorry, I just took an exceedingly long pause there. What I want to do is go on the IMDb website, IMDb, and run down their top-rated movies. Let me explain IMDb to those of you who aren't familiar. This is probably the only app that I use, like, every day on a consistent basis. It's great. But IMDb... Actually, and I didn't learn this until recently, stands for the International Movie Database, which I thought is pretty cool. Um, And they got, I want to go through their top 10 films here uh, and talk about the ones that I have seen, the ones that I haven't, uh, and talk about, you know, just like, where why these rankings are falling where they're falling and then we can kind of get into a more heavy discussion about it but i want to go down the list here um now imdb these are all rated by users these are not these are everyday people like you and me not professional critics uh running down these movies let me take a sip of water sorry about that um These are everyday people like you and me voting. Um, So the top movie, the number one movie on the list of IMDb's top rated movies is The Shawshank Redemption. Um, That's a great movie. I don't know how many of you have seen it. I definitely recommend seeing it. Obviously, it's on charts like this all over the place when you talk about the greatest movies of all time. Shawshank Redemption is always going to appear somewhere towards the top of the list. Um, But Shawshank is something that, you know, it's not one of my favorite movies. I do agree that it is one of the best movies ever made, and it's one of the most well-made movies that I've ever seen. Um, definitely not one of my favorites. 
The acting's incredible. It's uh, Tim Robbins, uh, Morgan Freeman, and probably, I know the guy's been in 800 different movies, but probably the defining role of his career. Um, great supporting cast, great story, based off a of Stephen King novel. Uh, and, and it's really not, the novel's not horror, which is what most people associate most Stephen King things to be about. Um, but the Shawshank Redemption is more of a, more of a thriller, a, very much a drama, uh, and it's a great movie. Um, I love it a lot. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna go backwards, and then I'll reveal what the number two movie is, which can kind of act like the number one. We'll kind of. Do it like a countdown. But you know that the number one is Shawshank. So let's go to the bottom of the list. My thoughts are just all over the place. At number 20, we have the 1954 film Seven Samurai. Uh, I've never seen it. Um, Let me see kind of what's going on here. A poor village under attack by bandits recruits seven unemployed samurai to help them defend themselves. Kind of like that Last Samurai movie with Tom Cruise, which is a great movie. Uh, I don't know any of this cast. It's definitely a foreign film. Um, But I will add it to my list to uh, definitely check that out. If you guys have seen it, let me know. Love to hear about it. 19 is Goodfellas. Goodfellas is a great... I have to watch Goodfellas again. Believe it or not, I've only watched the movie once through. Um... Goodfellas is one of those movies a lot of people consider it to be Scorsese's magnum opus, if you will. Uh, It's, you know, a great mob movie, great mafia movie. It's an excellent kind of predecessor to The Sopranos. Uh, If you want to get into The Sopranos, I would say watch Goodfellas first if you really want a taste of what The Sopranos is like. Um but Goodfellas is a great movie. I'm really excited to see The Irishman, as I said, trying to see it this weekend. Um, I talked about that yesterday because it kind of brings back some of the guys from, from that movie with uh, De Niro and Pesci. Um, so, yeah, Goodfellas is definitely good. doesn't rank in my favorite mob movies, uh, mafia movies. doesn't even rank in my favorite movies. But it's good. It's definitely good. Um, I just feel like, to me, the story kind of bounces all over the place. But again, I've only watched it once. I definitely want to watch it again. But I think that's also kind of the purpose of the movie, is that the, the, the story's supposed to bounce all over the, all over the place. The next one, uh, number 18, is the 1975 film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I've never seen that, uh, actually, which is insane uh, that I haven't. Uh, no pun intended. Um, Jack Nicholson is one of the creepiest dudes you'll ever see, but he is one of the coolest actors in the business, and he's one of the best actors in the business. Um, so I'll definitely check that one out. Uh, 17 is The Matrix, the original Matrix from 1999. Never seen The Matrix. I know, crucify me, whatever, but I know it's a cool movie. I've been meaning to check it out for such a long time, but I just haven't. Um, And so I'm definitely going to put that. 16, wow, this already worked its way into the top 20. Joker, which I talked about yesterday. It's fucking phenomenal. Go see it. No other words to say. 15 is Lord of the Rings uh, Two Towers. Uh, That's actually my favorite of the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, I know Return of the King won all the Oscars and has that record for the amount of Oscars won uh, for one movie, but, you know, and Fellowship of the Ring is even really good too. Uh, But Two Towers was always my favorite for some strange reason. I don't know why. I think. Just the amount of suspense in it that is building towards Return of the King. And granted, you get all the payoff in Return of the King, but Two Towers was always my favorite. 14, uh, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, widely considered to be objectively the best Star Wars movie that's ever been made. Um, It's not my favorite. My favorite is Return of the Jedi. Uh, Episode 5 is definitely a beautifully made movie. It is an example of a sequel that took everything that was great about the first movie, which when the first Star Wars came out, it was such a... It caused such a seismic shift in Hollywood and in the movie-making business in general. And it just caught everybody's attention. But when you look at all the other Star Wars movies that have come out, the first one, the very first Star Wars from 1977, seems very simple. Uh, And it is, because it's just supposed to introduce you to the world. But Episode Five takes all that and takes what's great about that and just... Blows it up by 30 and says, hey, you liked all this. We're going to give you all of this and give you so much character development, so much. So it is one of the best Star Wars movies. Um, Again, it's something that I think objectively is the best. However, it's not my favorite. And that's a difference between saying something is the best and your favorite. Because film is subjective. There's no measuring stick as to where you can say... You know, this is how good a film is. This is blah, blah, blah. It's subjective. Everybody is going to feel a different way about a movie. And that's what I love about it, to be honest. Um, That's what's really great for me. Uh, But again, episode five, that's number 14. Number 13, we have the Christopher Nolan film Inception. As I've said before, Nolan's my favorite uh, director, favorite filmmaker. Um, He's... Amazing, he's a genius. Inception is just one of those movies that I remember seeing and just thinking about it for weeks after I saw it. Um, it was something that I did not think I was going to see. Uh, I was still pretty young. Um, it was almost it's almost ten years ago. Jeez, uh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, but. It was something I didn't think I was going to see, but then I wound up seeing it, and I'm just like, I'm thinking about this movie so much. And I still do to this day. Uh, Still debate what the ending is. Number 12 is Forrest Gump. Uh, If you want to fucking cry your heart out, watch Forrest Gump. If you don't, if you don't want to be depressed, don't watch Forrest Gump. That's really the only emotion I experienced during Forrest Gump, is just I felt so depressed, which I will acknowledge means that the movie did its job. Um, and if movies make you feel something, anything, the movie's done its job. And this movie made me feel very depressed when I saw it. I haven't seen it since the first time I saw it, which was years ago. And I don't really intend to watch it again anytime soon. Tom Hanks is the the renaissance man of, of Hollywood. He is one of the best actors out there. He's probably the most class act guy in all of Hollywood. He's just a consummate cool dude. Uh, and I just want to hang out with the guy for like an hour and just bullshit with him because he's just a cool guy and he's such a humble guy and he's funny also. Uh, But Forrest Gump, again, depressing. Very good movie that I can recognize objectively is a very good movie. Um, But it's not not nearly one of my favorites. Uh, At 11, we talked about uh, Lord of the Rings before. This is The Fellowship of the Ring, uh, the first one, uh, which kind of, again, serves the purpose of the first film, introduces you to the world. I think it's a really good movie. I don't really have much else to say about it. It's good. It's emotional. It's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the only one that Sean Bean is in, Sean Bean's awesome. Number 10 is Fight Club. All right, I'm going to just hear me out for a second. I think this was one of the weirdest fucking movies I've ever seen. Um, I, there's just so much going on. And maybe I didn't take enough time to to dissect exactly, you know, everything that was going on on screen. But 
yet again, I, I, I just remember watching it and being like, this is so fucking weird. And I don't even know how to describe it. I'll just read you the uh, description on IMDb. It says, an insomniac office worker and a devil-may-care soap maker. I don't even know what a devil-may-care... What, what does that expression mean? Form an underground fight club that evolves into something much, much more. If anybody knows what the something much, much more is, please tell me because I remember watching the end of this and being like, what the fuck did I just watch? And yeah, Meatloaf is in this movie too, so you take with that what you will. Uh, Number nine, another classic that I've yet to see, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, I know it's one of those movies that everybody talks about. I gotta watch it. I'll put it on the list. Number eight, uh, Pulp Fiction. Look, I've seen Pulp Fiction a bunch of times. Um, it's very strange to me, and I know it's considered everybody's favorite or most people's favorite Tarantino movie. It's not for me. My favorite of his is Inglorious Bastards. I love that movie so much. It was such a trip, that movie, and probably a very close second is Reservoir Dogs. Um, the guy's ability to create, excuse me, create dialogue. And just suck you in with these characters and their dialogue. And it's not hard to follow if you just listen. Pulp Fiction, I've listened so many times and I can't fucking explain what the purpose of that movie is. There's a little too much. There's the whole weird, like, dude rape scene in the basement, which... I have a really hard time watching rape on screen. Uh, That's just, like, not something that's a very touchy subject for a lot of people. Um, And that's one of the reasons I haven't watched Game of Thrones, because I know that there's a lot of rape uh, in there, and I just can't watch that stuff. It's just extremely disturbing for me. Uh, So, like, when you get to that point in Pulp Fiction, it's like, what the fuck am I watching? I don't know. To me, it's just not its not really up there for me. Uh, number seven, talked about this, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Won Best Picture. Uh, it, it actually won. It holds the record for the amount of movies that won. Uh, you know, the, or the movie that single-handedly won the most Oscars. I'm trying to see where... I was going to try and read them off, but I can't find it. Yeah, it's emotional and everything. I always wanted to see a physical manifestation of Sauron come back and, like, actually fight rather than him just staying as the eye in the sky, kind of. But still, it's it's a great movie. I always wanted to see just that that physical manifestation of Sauron. Uh, Number six is Schindler's List. I've yet to watch that. That's another depression movie. Uh, three hours and 15 minutes, so, yep, get your catheters, folks. Um, uh, boy, in German-occupied Poland during World War II, industrialist Oscar Schindler gradually becomes concerned for his Jewish workforce after witnessing their persecution by the Nazis. I'm sure it's an excellent movie. I don't know if I'm ever going to be in the mindset where I can watch this. Uh, I just, I just don't know. So there's Schindler's List. Number five, 12 Angry Men. Awesome. So good. Movie all takes place in one room. Uh, Sidney Lumet directed it. He's a great director. Definitely do some reading on how he directed that movie because the, the way the shots are crafted and everything, he makes the room look smaller and smaller as time goes on, you know, because, to give this kind of claustrophobic feel. Um, and... It was. It, it, it's just a great movie, and definitely check out Twelve Angry Men if you haven't had the chance, or read the book too. Uh, it was based off the book, um, and I, I just I love that movie. Performances are so good, and it's just at the end you do kind of feel good. You feel like you know there is hope for humanity which is hard to come by these days. Number four, my favorite film of all time, The Dark Knight. Talked about that yesterday. Just unbelievable. And number three and number two, 
respectively. Number three is Godfather Part Two, and number two is Godfather, and we already said Shawshank is number one. Godfather is my favorite mafia movie. Who knows? The Irishman might change that. Who knows? Um, but The Godfather is just one of those things that, you know, when I saw it, uh, when I saw it the first time, my dad showed me the movie, and I'm just like, ah, I don't get that. I, I was too young. Um, but that's always like a rite of passage for, you know, especially for a guy that it's like you have to watch The Godfather. I don't know. It's just become this weird, like, guy thing. But then I watched it on my own when I was in high school, and I just remember loving every minute of it. The dialogue is unbelievable. The story is unbelievable. It is, it's the perfect example of taking an atypical character in a world that he does not fit into and making him fit into that world and fall from grace. People talk about, you know, the Joker, which is the story of watching a guy go from being broken to totally irredeemable. And you kind of feel bad for the Joker in the beginning. And you kind of toe that line the whole movie. You're like, do I feel bad for this guy? Or, you know, is he getting too insane to, you know, and you kind of toe that line. The Godfather is another movie that does this because Michael Corleone is, he is, he's the good boy of the family. The only one, at the beginning of the movie at least, that was not involved in the family mafia business. His father never wanted him to be involved. But through circumstance and through all these things, you watch him slowly get to be more and more involved. And you watch him become somebody who is really irredeemable. He's a good guy. You can tell. You can tell that he's got like good intentions. But he's just doing horrible things. And he's killing people, you know, in the name of the business. And, you know, to him, it's just business. He says it. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Um... But that's another great story of, you know, it's almost a character study, The Godfather. As much as everybody praises Marlon Brando in that movie for his performance as the actual Godfather, the story really is about the son. And I think it's a great character study of the son and a great way to say, oh, look, Michael has really, Michael has really fallen, you know, from where he was at the beginning, he, he was, you know, he fought in the war. He came home. He was the good boy. Uh, he had a he had a good wife um, that he loved very much. And he had everything that he needed and wanted in life. Uh, but then again, as you watch the movie go on and on, you just watch him slowly start to fall. And it comes out of interest for his family and protecting his family. So it comes from a decent place. But, you know, as you're watching the movie, you know, you know that, you know the way that the mafia takes care of their business and the way that they get rid of their competitors. Um, wow. So I just went on a while there with that list. Uh, I hope... You all enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to wrap up, uh, or at least start to wrap up. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, next week, we'll be on a regular schedule, Tuesday and Thursday, both at 3 p.m. Uh, again, I'm not going to do live shows, at least for the first couple weeks, just so that I can get comfortable with doing this pre-recording stuff. Um and, you know, uh, kind of an idea I'm toying with because a lot of people reach out to me that they want to be on this podcast. Uh, the thing I am going to, uh, the thing I'm going to say is what I want to try and do is do one episode a week where it's just me and one episode uh, where it's a guest, me and the guest, since it's two episodes a week. Uh, I think that would provide a nice, uh, nice balance, uh, you know, good, 
to get different perspectives in all the time because I don't want this podcast to just be me. Um, I want it to be educational. And again, uh, it's comedy therapy. So I want everybody to have a good laugh. Uh, I've been listening to some good music lately. Uh, If any of you know me, you know I'm a huge classic hard rock guy. Favorite band is Guns N' Roses. Very close second is ACDC. Um, I follow those bands religiously. Um, And then I all, you know, I'm just like classic rock in general is just the greatest generation of music. And you you can't say that it's not. Um, But again, that kind of stuff is subjective. You are entitled to enjoy whatever you want to enjoy. Um, but I've been listening to some good stuff. Like, there's that song by uh, Belinda Carlisle that is uh, Heaven is a Place on Earth. And I just listened to this hard rock cover of it, and it was fucking awesome. I'm trying to remember who it was by. Uh, let me see. Um, Heaven is a Place on Earth. It's by Elvin King. E-L-V-E-N-K-I-N-G. I can't play it on here because, again, that's a that's a copyright thing. Definitely check that out if you want to. And then there's the song, The Winner Takes All, uh, or The Winner Takes It All, which is an ABBA song. And I am unashamed to say it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's just a pleasure. ABBA is fucking awesome. Um, they're just great. Uh, but this cover of it, by this band, what are they called? At Vance, A-T space V-A-N-C-E, At Vance, the winner takes it all. I'm not going to try and sing it or do an impression. I don't do impressions. Um, and that's the other thing. Hey, I've been writing a lot of material, uh, a lot, every day. I'm just looking for a stage to get back on. And I can't wait to get back out there because I eat, live, and breathe comedy. It's just, it's a part of me, and I'm just getting antsy, and I really want to get back out on stage, and I can't wait to do it. Uh, If there's anything that any of you ever want to do, please don't hold yourself back from it. Please, I, I beg you, do whatever it is you want to fucking do, because this is your life. You can take charge. All right. I don't want to get preachy. Um, So anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, This has been fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our enlightening discussion um, and hope you got some comedic therapy today. Uh, So again, look on the bright side, everybody. I'm an optimist. You all should be optimists if you're not already. Um, But uh, enjoy your weekend, and I will... Talk to you on Tuesday. All right.